uh, see the question number one. Here we are given a visual of an infant, a child with photophobia, lacrimation is most likely to have. Now, if you see this visual, what is actually prominent here? Uh, what I always say, this is actually a blue baby. And whenever you see a blue baby, what are the things that should come to your mind? The first thing, it can be a blue sclera because it is giving a bluish hue. So it can be a blue sclera also. And another thing, where you are getting blue sclera along with the other things like what they have given is the photophobia and lacrimation. Now how to approach this type of question? Let's see. When you have to approach this type of question, we have to see where you can get this lacrimation and where you can get the photophobia. Now let's begin with the lacrimation here. If you see this lacrimation, an infant having lacrimation basically can have two things. Either there can be the congenital glaucoma, it can be a congenital glaucoma or it can be a congenital decryocystitis. Congenital decryocystitis which are considered to be the main two causes of watering in a newborn or an infant or a child. So we have got two things, one is congenital glaucoma and one is congenital decryocystitis. Now they have not given the decryocystitis here. So obviously there is a stronger possibility of congenital glaucoma here Plus, what are the things that will go in favor with this congenital glaucoma? Another thing is the photophobia. Now, because here they are giving photophobia also, this photophobia is a characteristic feature found in the congenital glaucoma. In fact, a patient who is having congenital glaucoma, as I usually say, always presents with BPL card. Now, what is this BPL card? B presents with the blepharospasm. B presents with the blepharospasm means it is the spasm of the eyelids and along with this blepharospasm there is P and there is L that is there is photophobia P for photophobia and L for lacrimation. So whenever a child is presenting with these three things, we have blepharospasm, we have photophobia and we have lacrimation, then usually our diagnosis is strongly suspicion of what you call as buphthalmos or congenital glaucoma. So what is this actually buphthalmos? This condition is called as buphthalmos. And what are the other things that goes in favor of this buphthalmos? Look at here. Can you see the large size cornea? So we have got a large cornea also here, which will go in favor of this buphthalmos. One is the large cornea because the increased intraocular pressure at this age will lead to increase in the size of the eyeball and increase in the size of the eyeball also is accompanied with the increase in the size of cornea. Not, not only we have large cornea, we also have hazy cornea. So if you see here, we have large size cornea also, we have a hazy cornea also and along with this, this bluish sclera which is visible, this is called as blue sclera. So the blue sclera here, then we have got the large cornea, then we have got the hazy cornea, then we have blepharospasm, we have photophobia, we have lacrimation and these are ample of things which are combinedly giving you the strong possibility of this patient having congenital glaucoma called as buphthalmos. So we have B for buphthalmos, some of the important things about the buphthalmos, just a quick revision, the B for buphthalmos is also B for bilateral B for boys, it's more common in boys, then B for blue sclera, we have blue sclera here, then we have B for blepharospasm, we have blepharospasm also here, and then we have got also B for backward subluxation, we have backward subluxation of the lens. So this child who is having photophobia and lacrimation is basically having the buphthalmos. We have bilateral involvement also. We have large size cornea. We have hazy cornea. We have blue sclera. And then we have got the backward subluxation of the lens. Now, when you are trying to do a question, you should know 
why this is the answer. But you should also know why the all other options are not the answer. So let's see why other things are not the answer. If you go with the retinoblastoma, RB is retinoblastoma. In retinoblastoma, we can have unilateral involvement also. We can have bilateral involvement also. Plus, you should have leukocoria. The earliest as well as most important sign of retinoblastoma is the leukocoria, the whitish pupillary reflex. So therefore, this can't be the answer. Now, why not the megalocornea? The other question, why not megalocornea? It's not megalocornea because it is showing other things also apart from this large size cornea. Because we are having haziness also, we are having blue sclera also, we are having the blepharospasm also, we are having photophobia and lacrimation also. So all these things will again rule out megalocornea and there is no possibility of all these symptoms in cases of megalocornea. Now, Another thing is the corneal dystrophy. In corneal dystrophy, again, we won't have the large cornea, we won't have the hazy cornea, and rather we will have the degeneration, which are usually present in the periphery of the cornea. Plus, these dystrophies are usually non-inflammatory. They are bilateral, but they are non-inflammatory. Therefore, there will be no photophobia. Therefore, again, corneal dystrophy is not a possibility. So, answer here is the congenital glaucoma or the buphthalmos.